Lobo, the main man, the last Zarnian in the galaxy, was on the hunt. His massive motorcycle, the Space Hog, roared through the cosmos, leaving a trail of destruction and interstellar debris in its wake. Lobo grinned, fangs gleaming under the harsh light of a distant sun as he zeroed in on his prey, a slimy hut-like creature worth a fortune to the right buyers. The bounty wasn't the most exciting he'd ever taken, but the payout would be enough to fuel his hedonistic lifestyle for a while. Come to Papa, he muttered, his finger itching on the trigger of his massive plasma rifle. But just as he was about to close the distance and blow his target to hell, the fabric of reality seemed to warp around him. The stars twisted, and the Space Hog's navigation system went haywire, screeching warnings in languages even Lobo didn't recognise. He snarled and tried to steer his bike, but it was too late. A swirling vortex of light and colour swallowed him whole, pulling him into the unknown. Lobo emerged from the wormhole with a lurch, the Space Hog spinning wildly out of control. He pulled hard on the controls, managing to stabilise the bike just in time to see where he was headed. Below him loomed a massive planet, its surface dotted with enormous structures and bristling with orbital defences. Fragging wormholes, Lobo cursed. He hated dimensional travel. It always led to trouble. He looked down at the planet with a curious scowl. Where the hell am I now? The Space Hog systems rebooted and displayed the readout. The planet was Terra, the seat of the greatest human empire in a universe not his own. Unfazed, Lobo revved his bike and descended towards the surface, making a beeline for the biggest and most ostentatious structure he could see, the Emperor's Palace. The palace was a gargantuan fortress, a spire of gold and ivory that stabbed into the heavens. It was surrounded by layers of defences, armies of Adeptus Custodes, and shielded by powerful psychic wards. But none of that mattered to Lobo, who simply ploughed through everything in his path. Automated defence systems activated, unleashing barrages of anti-aircraft fire. But the space hog weaved through the explosions, Lobo cackling as he dodged the deadly barrage. Bring it on, your tin cans, Lobo howled as he blasted through the palace's outer defences. Finally, he crashed through the walls of the throne room itself, his bike skidding across the pristine floor in a shower of sparks. He leaped off the bike, twirling his hook and chain with a maniacal grin, and looked around. The throne room was vast, its ceiling lost in shadow. Massive golden statues of the Emperor's warriors lined the walls, and at the far end, seated on a golden throne that radiated power, was the Emperor of Mankind himself. His eyes glowed with an otherworldly light, his presence overwhelming. Lobo wasn't impressed. Hey pal, Lobo shouted, his voice echoing through the chamber. You the boss round here? I got a bounty. Before Lobo could finish, the Emperor raised a hand, and a wave of psychic energy slammed into Lobo, disintegrating him in an instant. The last Zarnian didn't even have time to scream as his body was obliterated, reduced to a fine mist that settled on the cold marble floor. The Emperor lowered his hand, his expression one of mild curiosity. He hadn't sensed any malice from the intruder, but his presence was an affront to the sanctity of the palace. Yet something about the interloper nagged at the back of the Emperor's mind. He watched as the blood droplets scattered across the floor began to coalesce, forming a small pool that bubbled and frothed. The Emperor's interest was piqued as the blood began to take shape, reforming into the figure of Lobo, muscle and bone knitted together with astonishing speed and within moments, the bounty hunter was whole again. Lobo shook his head, cracked his neck, and dusted himself off. Ah hell, that smarts, Lobo grumbled, rubbing his temples. He looked up at the Emperor and scowled. What the hell, pal? You didn't even let me finish. The Emperor for once was taken aback. He had faced countless enemies across the galaxy, but none had survived his psychic wrath like this. He regarded Lobo with newfound respect. You are... Resilient, the Emperor said, his voice echoing with the weight of millennia. What manner of creature are you? Lobo crossed his arms, unimpressed. I ain't here to give you my life story, you big glowy bastard. I'm looking for work, got it? And I ain't cheap. The Emperor's golden eyes narrowed. He could sense the incredible power within Lobo, raw, untamed, and dangerous. This being was not of this universe, but he could be a potent tool if directed correctly. Very well, the Emperor said, leaning forward on his throne. There is a task that requires your unique abilities. A world within my domain has been overrun by a Xenos species known as the Tyranids. They are a scourge upon the galaxy, devouring everything in their path. I require someone to 
cleanse this world. Lobo's grin returned, broader than ever. Sounds like my kind of job. I'll take it. But first, he pointed a finger at the Emperor. How much you paying? The Emperor allowed a small smile to play across his lips. Succeed and you shall be rewarded beyond your wildest dreams. Fail and you will not return to this throne room. Lobo shrugged. Yeah, yeah, don't get your golden panties in a twist. I'll get the job done. But, uh, he scratched his head. What the hell's a Tyranid? The Emperor waved a hand and an image of a Tyranid swarm appeared in the air before Lobo. The creatures were nightmarish, wore teeth, claws and chitinous armour, a relentless tide of death and hunger. Lobo's eyes widened with glee. Now that's what I'm talking about, he shouted. You got yourself a deal, shiny. Without another word, Lobo revved up the space hog, tearing out of the throne room and back into the void. As he left, he muttered to himself, frickin' Tyranids, whatever they are, they ain't gonna know what hit them. The world overrun by Tyranids was a hellscape. Once a thriving human colony, it was now a desolate wasteland, the sky choked with ash and the ground littered with the bones of the dead. The Tyranids had turned the world into a feeding ground, their bioforms swarming across the surface like a living carpet. Lobo landed with a crash, his bike tearing through the ruins of a city as he surveyed the scene. His eyes gleamed with excitement as he spotted the first wave of Tyranid creatures advancing towards him. Hormagaunts, their sickle-like claws raised high, screeching as they charged. Well, ain't you ugly as a sight for sore eyes, Lobo chuckled, drawing his chain and hook. The Hormagaunts launched at him, but Lobo was already moving, his chain lashed out, wrapping around one of the creatures and crushing it in a single bone-snapping motion. He whirled around, slashing through another with his hook, splitting it in two with a wet, satisfying crunch. More Tyranids surged forward, but Lobo was a blur of motion, tearing through them with savage glee. He grabbed one by the throat, squeezing it until its head popped like a grape, and then swung its body into a cluster of others, sending them flying. Come on, you frickin' bugs, Lobo roared. I'll take you all on. The Tyranids responded in kind. Larger bioforms emerged from the swarm. Warriors, Carnifexes, and a Hive Tyrant that towered over the battlefield. They charged at Lobo, determined to overwhelm him with sheer numbers and brute strength. But Lobo was unstoppable. He dodged and weaved through the horde, his movements a brutal ballet of death. His plasma rifle tore through the Carnifexes, their armoured hides no match for his firepower. The Hive Tyrant tried to crush him with his massive claws, but Lobo leaped onto its back, driving his hook into its skull and ripping out its brainstem. For an entire week, Lobo fought the Tyranids without rest. The battlefield was a cacophony of violence, explosions, gunfire and the screams of dying Xenos. Lobo's laughter echoed across the wasteland as he reveled in the carnage, his body regenerating from every wound the Tyranids managed to inflict. By the end of the seventh day, the planet was silent. The Tyranids were dead, their bodies strewn across the landscape like so much refuse. Lobo stood alone amidst the devastation, his armour caked in ichor, his grin as wide as ever. Lobo spat on the ground, wiped his hands on his coat, and climbed back onto the space hog. Frickin' bugs didn't even put up a good fight, he grumbled, revving up the engine. He looked around at the devastation, the once living horde now nothing more than lifeless biomass scattered across the wasteland. Guess the Emperor's gonna owe me big for this one. The space hog roared to life, lifting off the ground as Lobo steered it back towards the void of space. He left behind the charred and smoking remnants of what was once a thriving world, now nothing more than a graveyard for an entire Tyranid swarm. Lobo didn't care about the world's fate or the lives lost, he only cared about the next paycheck, and maybe a drink or two afterward. As the bike tore through the atmosphere, Lobo glanced back at the planet, chuckling to himself. Ain't no one else in this universe like the main man. Let's see what that shiny bastard's got for me next. The journey back to Terra was uneventful, save for a few unlucky space pirates who thought they could take on Lobo. Their ships and they were now drifting debris in the void. A testament to Lobo's policy of leaving no survivors. He barely even broke a sweat dealing with them, and soon enough, he was approaching the familiar site of the Emperor's Palace once more. This time, the defences didn't bother firing at him. They had learned their lesson. Lobo crashed into the throne room with his usual lack of decorum, the space hog skidding to a stop just before the Emperor's golden throne. The Adeptus Custodes, ever vigilant, stepped forward to challenge the interloper, but the Emperor waved them off with a simple gesture. Back already? the Emperor asked, his voice a mix of curiosity and something close to amusement. 
back and bored, Lobo replied, dismounting from the bike and stretching. Your bug problem's been taken care of. No need to thank me. Just pay up and I'm out of here. The Emperor's golden eyes studied Lobo intently. He could sense the truth in the bounty hunter's words. The psychic echo of the Tyranid Swarm's destruction still resonated throughout the warp, but there was something else, something that intrigued the Emperor. This being, this Lobo, was unlike anything he had encountered in the galaxy. His power, his resilience, his complete disregard for fear or pain, it was almost inspiring. You have done well, the Emperor said finally. The galaxy is safer for your actions. But tell me, Lobo, what drives you? What do you seek in this life? Lobo laughed, a deep guttural sound that filled the throne room. I seek whatever the hell I want, pal. Money, booze, violence, it's all the same to me. I live for the thrill and I take what I want. The Emperor's expression remained inscrutable, but he leaned forward slightly, his interest piqued. You are a unique creature, Lobo. I could use someone of your talents in my service. There are threats to humanity that even my army struggle to contain. With you by my side, we could achieve great things. Lobo raised an eyebrow, a cocky grin spreading across his face. You looking to hire me on full time? I'm flattered, but I don't do commitment, pal. I'm a free agent. The Emperor nodded as if he expected the answer. I see. Then consider this a standing offer. Should you ever find yourself in need of work, or should you ever tire of wandering the stars, know that the Imperium of Man will always have a place for you. Lobo shrugged. I'll keep that in mind, but don't hold your breath. Now, about that payment. The Emperor smiled, a rare, almost imperceptible gesture. With a wave of his hand, a chest filled with treasures appeared beside Lobo. Gold, jewels, rare artifacts from across the galaxy, all more valuable than anything Lobo had seen before. Lobo's eyes widened as he approached the chest, whistling appreciatively. Now that's more like it. Consider it a token of my gratitude, the Emperor said, and should you ever change your mind, remember what I've said. Lobo grabbed a fistful of gold coins, letting them clink together in his hand. Yeah, yeah, I'll remember. But for now I'm taking this and getting the hell out of here. See you around, shiny. Without another word, Lobo hoisted the chest onto the space hog, strapping it down with practiced ease. He swung a leg over the bike, revved the engine, and gave the Emperor a two-fingered salute.